Well, hello and welcome to the Nathan Nephew Show. I am Nathan Nephew. Have a lot to talk about. Not a lot of time to talk about it. But that's how it goes. We, uh, May 1st, May Day, was earlier this week. And, uh, like every year, it's becoming a tradition, it seems. And, I, I, I mean, we've, we've always had protests that, you know, that is a pr- tradition. But they're becoming more and more violent and more predictably violent. And, you know, I mean, where where's the violence coming from? Is it coming from these, the Tea Party? You know, the people that, that Harry Reid comes out and... And, and compares to anarchists, which apparently he doesn't understand what anarchy anarchy is. He doesn't understand what an anarchist is. He doesn't understand what the Tea Party is, is more likely. And frankly, I don't think he cares. Uh, he, he just wants, uh, you know, anarchists is, is a bad label to have, right? It's much like liberal or progressive or socialist or communist or whatever they're on now, what they're progressives now, right, I think. Uh, and you, so, so, you know, you try, the, you try the label your opponent. I mean, you can't beat him on... An ide- ideology, you know, you, you can't beat them with your ideas, with your beliefs. Then, you know, you, you you try to label them something that they're not. You try to destroy them. But there was a march in Seattle. Uh, the first march started on May first. It was uh, a, a a pro-immigration march. Uh, you know, amnesty and the whole nine yards, and it was largely peaceful. Largely peaceful. Not a lot of problems during that. And then a little while later, you know, that march was over. A little while later. Here comes the anti-capitalist folks, right? They're marching downtown in the business district, opposing capitalism while they're wearing their Starbucks shirts and their Nike shoes, you know, holding their signs made from commercial cardboard and protesting business. And, and what better way to protest business than to attack the police with rocks? I mean, really, if you're trying to get your message across, the best way to get it across is to destroy things, bust windows out, hurt people, Throw rocks at police, and what will that get? What will that get you? It will get you pepper spray, flash grenades, you know, a couple taps on the head with a with a baton, a bicycle. I saw videos of the police using their bicycles as shields, shielding businesses and themselves with them. You know, so I mean, you might get you might get a uh, a kickstand, you know, upside the head or something. Which yeah, you know, you're throwing rocks at the police or at anybody, you might deserve it a little bit. So, I mean, once again, regardless of what Harry Reid seems to think the Tea Party is, we see the violence coming from the left. Now, I'm not sure if these are Occupy Wall Street people. I mean, they're, they they have the same mentality, and, and their actions are similar. And they were billing themselves as an anti-capitalist group. So, you know, it's hard to say. I think last year uh, the, the, the main violence that we heard about might have been in Oakland. I'm not sure if that was May Day or not. But, you know, I mean, we had the same thing last year. Destroy businesses, destroy downtown, tip over trash cans, throw things around, you know, destroy cars, light stuff on fire. Just see how much damage you can do to get your point across that you're better than everybody else. And and that's really, you know, that's really what it is. These people think that they are better than everybody else, and, and we know that that's quite the opposite. But, hey, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to have to live with them or, or maybe beat them in elections and, and get some, you know, some people that can come up with the correct policies on things. They're never going to be happy. These people on the left, the anti-capitalists, the anti-freedom, the anti-choice, even though they pretend like they're pro-choice, but only when it comes to killing babies, you know, uh, it, it you're not going to make them happy. Unless you go down the road of, of pure socialism, pure communism. But I, you know, I, I don't, the country's definitely headed that way, but I, I don't think that's the way we want to go. And I don't think the majority of Americans think that that's the way we want to go or the way that we should go. I, I mean, along those lines, the, the gun control debate, you know, I've been talking about it for, for years now, but I mean, lately, you know, every show, you cannot avoid talking about gun control because that seems to be one of the big topics. Even when the major legislation gets defeated in, in the, the U.S. Senate, we still have to talk about it because it's still there. And now what we have is, uh, you know, cities like Illinois being required to come up with some sort of licensing to allow firearms to be carried in the state. And so they're forced to deal with this right now. And we, and we had a, a, a pretty comical uh exchange in the Illinois House uh a couple state representatives state uh representative uh boats i think bots something like that i'm i'm not really sure how he pronounces his name he's a republican he was almost correct uh he said some things that i thought were pretty stupid 
but I'm going to go ahead and play what he said. Uh, basically, there was a floor amendment attached to a bill, a concealed carry bill, and the floor amendment was the size of any normal bill, and he was saying... Floor amendments are supposed to be small technical changes. You're not supposed to have to worry about the the content. It's not supposed to be an entire piece of legislation in and of itself. So basically, he was urging people to vote no in a, a very nice and calm manner. It is a ploy, and once again, your side of the aisle keeps trying to make ploys instead of dealing with the real issue. Keep playing games. Keep playing games. There's a there there is a time on time limit online. Do you know that, that, that one of the associations actually has a click down of when we have constitutional carry in the state of Illinois? And you want to endanger the, your, your citizens and keep playing games like this? Vote no. Ooh, and that's where he threw the microphone. Uh, uh, what, what, would be, what would be so bad about constitutional carry? He's a Republican in Illinois, sure, but he's a Republican. And he's saying that the Democrats want to endanger the citizens by not taking this seriously and possibly not passing a bill on time and allowing the state to go, you know, they're allowing their restrictions to follow the Constitution, giving people so-called constitutional carry, which in the raw sense is carry anything, anywhere, anytime. And that's how it's supposed to be. So what's so bad about this? How How is this representative a Republican? He's standing up. He's correct in fighting back against this huge, huge atrocity of a, of a, a, a floor amendment. But constitutional carry would not be a bad thing to have in any state. I mean, a few states do have it, and they don't have problems like Chicago with murder and violent crime. And the other thing he's talking about is the, the, the stuff in this, this, uh, floor amendment, which I believe was creating may issue concealed carry licenses, meaning that, you know, the sheriff or the state or the city or whoever they give the power to gets to decide who gets a license. And it's not just everybody who qualifies. It's, you know, friends and, and, and celebrities and people who they feel need a firearm and not just you or I who are just peons and we'll just call the police. But he's talking about that might not even be constitutional. And of course there's a brilliant response from a Democrat about what he thinks they should do about legislation that they don't, they aren't sure if it meets constitutional muster. Uh, a lot of talk uh, in this room about the Constitution and, and what's constitutional, but the last time I looked around, uh, there's not one single constitutional scholar sitting in this chamber. So why don't we stop with all the nonsense and talking about what's constitutional and what's not constitutional and get to what's actually in the bill and about what our Supreme Court, the actual scholars, have said. And it was just in the last week that the New York law was up in front of the Supreme Court of the United States, and the Supreme Court of the United States had the chance to take the NRA's appeal of the Second Circuit's opinion upholding May issue. And you know what the Supreme Court did? The Supreme Court decided not to hear the case because they were fine with the Second Circuit's opinion upholding May issue. That is the only opinion we have on the books from constitutional scholars. The Supreme Court declined to hear the case. So all of this nonsense and this absolute nonsense and two-facedness uh, from the other side of the aisle, and I don't say this lightly, it's nonsense. The, it's nonsense, sir. It's nonsense. It's Republican it yelling back. It is absolute back. nonsense. You know what? You can scream all you want. The House will be in order. Yes, it will. The House will be in order. You knock it off, you debating people. We will not tolerate debate here. Now, I mean, what the hell is this Democrat talking about that nobody in the Illinois House is a constitutional scholar? So let's just not worry about the Constitution. Let's just pass laws. We're here to write legislation, damn it. And we're not going to worry about that pesky Constitution. We have judges that will worry about that. And that's a problem that I've brought up over and over again, that we are operating under those pretenses that we will pass laws and then we'll wait for a judge to make a ruling, to make a decision on whether that is in line with the Constitution and whether that law can stand. And that means everything you do in life, you're basing the legality of it on case law, on a precedent being set by a judge. We're taking all of these representatives, they're just doing what they want to do, and then we're putting this in the hand of one or just a handful of judges to decide whether it's the right thing or not. 
And what what we see, we see it happening over and over again in California that the majority of the people in the state will vote for something in an election. You know, a, a ballot measure will come up. They'll vote for it. And then the courts overrule what the people voted for. Why are we letting judges decide everything? I don't think the point is to put all the power in the hands of one or two judges. Uh, judges with lifelong appointments. I mean, they have nothing to lose, right? They make the wrong decision. Yeah, big deal. They're not going to be fired. They're there until they decide to retire. Uh, of course, the representative yells back, you know, going going off about how, you know, that they, they're playing games, keep playing games and all these things. And, and you know, they're, they're trying to keep the house in order. And, and the Democrat comes back and makes a very solid point about the kind of people that we want carrying guns and why we they should have May issue in Illinois. Thank you. So here's my point, members. We don't want someone like that carrying a concealed weapon. The house will be in order. The house will be in order. The house will be in order. Yes, it will. The house will be in order. We I said it before, but come on, guys. Let's just get along, okay? I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back. I want to talk about illegal immigration for sure. I, I want to get into a, a a family that had their child taken away because they wanted to change hospitals because they, they didn't like the doctor they had at the first hospital. Uh, and CPS and the police came in without a warrant and took their child away and, and kept it for, for quite a while. Uh, and it turns out that it, it wasn't really an urgent medical emergency like the first doctor said. And that, that really bothers me. So those two things and a lot more, uh, check out my website, NathanNephew.com. Don't forget to listen to Ad Odds at OddsShow.com. I'll be right back. Obama wants your money, and he's determined to get it. He wants your money to buy up unions, his Wall Street cronies, and to expand the Obama welfare nation. Well, Swiss America is determined to stop him from stealing your money. They want to send you an award-winning film, I Want Your Money, on DVD that exposes his plan. It'll help keep the government's hands off your money using gold, silver, and other hard asset strategies to protect your hard-earned money. Call today and request the DVD, I Want Your Money, normally $19.95, yours absolutely free. Let Swiss America show you how to use gold, silver, and other hard assets to protect your hard-earned money. Call now, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call Swiss America right now. Learn all about investing in gold, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call now. Red State Talk Radio. Conservatism, Red State Style. All right, welcome back to the Nathan Nephew Show. Like I said, there is a ton to talk about. Before I get into immigration, uh, I, I do want to bring up this uh, really despicable display by a Virginia councilwoman. Councilwoman in Martinsville, Virginia. Uh, a, a group of students was presenting a, a quilt that they made. Each student made a square for the quilt based on what they had learned in a project they did. And... There was one piece of a quilt that uh, they they got across a bridge at some point during this during this project, and and, and the kid put a little stick figure. He used a black uh, yarn or, or or whatever you use to make a quilt uh, thread to make a little stick figure, and then on the other side where he represented his increase in knowledge, he made a large gold stick figure. And this councilwoman was offended. Not only was she offended, you'll hear that she interrupts the presentation. 
Now, now the, the, the student giving the presentation here is not the student that made that particular square, but we will, we'll hear from him, uh, we'll hear from him in a, in a bit here. So, uh, let me find it here. Here we go. And Ron Wilkerson's the one with the dam right there. His, when we were taking the city tour, tour, we got to walk across the Philpot Dam and the small black person represents us before we learned all the information about it. And then the bigger gold person is how he feels after we've been enriched with all the different knowledge. Fair enough. And then mine right there with the subway tokens, We, when we read the book about New York City, we learned about the different history of all the subway tokens, and I was intrigued by that. So we are, they're all falling down. Excuse me? Um, why is the small black person the negative image? It, it's not negative. It's... um. It's just showing how much we increased by... I take offense to that. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't mean to make an offense in all this. Who, who, whoever reviewed that to make a small black person the before and the gold, what you are afterwards, considering that you only talk to 10% of black people in a city that's 45% African American, I take offense to that, and I hope that you do not display that. Okay, please. Um, yes, um, I, okay. Go ahead, Lola. Um, and the next square is Hunter Jennings, and she did a parkour man because. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. And Ron Wilkerson's the one. We, we know that black stick figures are obviously equal to gold stick figures because, I mean, really, shouldn't it offend the gold guy that he was so big in this square? I mean, are they calling him fat because he's gold? Is that really what it? I mean, what the hell is she talking about? I mean, how can that offend anybody? And I know how it can. It shouldn't, but I understand because I see this all the time and it's getting worse that you can't do anything that represent any. I, I mean, come on. It was a black stick figure and the student made it a, a small black, black void, right? I mean, void of knowledge was really what I think he was going for. And then gold, because gold is something that people like, right? It's color of, you know, it's shiny and bright and it's good. Uh, and that was representing the knowledge that he had after the project. The teacher tra- tries to explain this, and actually he, the student who made it, comes up and asks her what color to use. And, and it's really not surprising what she says about that. Now, I, I want to commend each and every one of y'all for all the hard work that you put into it. And I want to ask her a very quick question. Uh, any character or any symbol that was put on the... Uh, on your quilt there that I, I, I like and enjoy very much. Uh, for one instant, did anybody think they were putting anything on there that would offend anybody? Did you have anybody African-American involved to I'm, even ask? I'm sorry, madam. I'm asking a question. Well, so and, was I. and I'm waiting for my answer. If you, if you could answer uh, in audible. I think that you have <clears throat> sitting behind you one very upset young lady. I think it's because our heart and soul went into it. Yes, ma'am. I think you have uh, 16 of the most genuine, precious, dear, open-minded, willing, and friendly people you'll ever have a chance to meet. Everything they did was done with a genuine nature. Nothing had any innuendo behind it. It was simply his idea to say we've come from some non-knowledge to great knowledge. He picked those colors for just because... He, he had no co- connection, and and I would submit that um, they've never thought anything like that. Everything on there was done in love. Right? I was just doing the dark color and the bright color. I was not. I had I no, it was nothing like that. I, I mean, as a person who is of dark color, I would suggest and recommend that in the future you consult with somebody who is of dark color. What color would you recommend me using? I don't care, but not black. Okay. Um. So we just we just wanted you to know that it was all done in genuine nature and all right yeah and what one of the students sitting in the chairs was was crying because I mean this is something that they did they were proud of they were presenting it to the city council and they donated it to the city in hopes that it would be disp- displayed somewhere for you know the entire community to enjoy this councilwoman hopes they don't display it and in fact it, when I read this 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 what happened earlier this week or last week. They said if they did dis- display it, they would put a disclaimer on it that the black stick figure, in fact, was not a product of racism. I mean, how stupid is that? Every time 
Uh, children, if you're listening, anytime you want to pick up a black marker or a black crayon or a pencil, because most pencils write in black, you had better consult a person of color before you use it because it might be offensive. Speaking of offensive, and we had the, uh, the May Day protest march earlier, you know, on May 1st that was fairly peaceful in Seattle, the, the pro immigration. And, and that's the big talk now. And, and especially after the bombings in Boston, uh, you have some people trying to shove immigration reform through saying, we have to do it. We have to do it. And then the smart people saying, ah, let's slow down and make sure we do it right. And we even have some conservatives like Marco Rubio out there who is great on most things except immigration. You know, I, and I just wanted to talk about this a bit. I'm, I do not understand, aside from the thought that Republicans need to pander to to Latinos to get their vote, which will not work. It hasn't worked in the past, and it won't work now. I don't understand this whole concept of a pathway to citizenship for illegal immigrants who are here today. I really don't understand it. They're felons. They are criminals. I don't think that we need to give them a shortcut, even if it's Marco Rubio saying it'll be 15, 20 years before they can apply for citizenship. I don't care. In the meantime, we're giving them work visas and, you know, green cards and, and things. And I, I don't think that's the right way to do, to do it. They broke the law. They came here illegally. We cannot reward them for being here illegally. Now, I'm not saying I have all of the answers to that, but I don't think giving them a, Pathway to citizenship without going home and getting in line is the proper way to do it. We need to obviously not give them welfare, and we have California trying to put them on, on juries, trying to give them health care. Next step is to let them vote. I, I mean, these are the things we need to avoid. We need to tighten up immigration. You know, we need security at the border, physical security, surveillance, you know, I mean, uh, offense, right? people we need bodies there we need people there with guns big guns to stop people from coming in illegally and we need to do a much better job screening the people that we do let in we used to take people that would help our country if we had a need for a physicist and there was a physicist trying to get in we would let them in because that makes sense that advances the united states of america that is a benefit to us now we just have quotas that we have to let so many people in from third world countries it's a numbers game now. It's not, you know, there's not any good strategy to it of allowing people in this country that will help us. Everything we do should be to the benefit of the United States of America and the citizens here. I, I, and I don't understand this thought that we need to make the people who are already here illegally make them citizens or even give them work visas or green cards or whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to do, I just do not understand it. Maybe somebody can help me out. Send me an email, talk at NathanNephewShow.com. You know, I mean, I'm I'm definitely willing to discuss it, but I, I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't think there needs to be any new pathways to citizenship. I think we need to put them back in the, the end of the line, like the people who are trying to do it legally, and not give them benefits while they're here until they go through the entire process like everybody else who follows the law. Real quick, a couple in... California. Uh, I believe the husband's from Russia, the woman's from Germany. They had a, a child who was sick, got a fever. They took him to the ho took her to the hospital. Uh, it turned out that there was a heart condition, and the doctors there said that they would have to do surgery. And I guess at one point, a nurse came in and gave the baby, and this is a young baby, five months old, I think, gave the baby some medicine, and they said, what is that? And she said, antibiotic. They said, for what? And she said, I don't, you know, I don't know. And the doctor had said no antibiotics, so they obviously didn't trust this doctor. They didn't like him, but the hospital wouldn't discharge the child. So they just left with their kid, right? They have the right to do that and went to directly to another hospital to get a second opinion. That doctor wrote even in the report that there's no risk of the child going home with their parents. It's not an imminent medical emergency. It's not urgent that needs surgery immediately. They went home. Sometime later, the police come in, no warrant, with Child Protective Services, no warrant. The father says, you know, what are you doing? They basically knock him down, get the keys, go in his house, go over and say, hey, I'm going to grab your baby. Don't resist me. Don't fight. Take the kid. They take these people's child away from them with no warrant, no warning, and no probable cause. And in the report, Child Protective Services, they say they did it due to severe negligence, but the only thing that they have to cite for that is that 
they denied medical care to their child, which isn't true at all. Now, I think they've since got their child back, but it took a while, a couple weeks, I think, even. And I could be wrong about that, and I hope I am, but it's just completely ridiculous that this sort of thing is happening in this country. And what's really sad is these are two immigrants. The woman from Germany is saying that the government in Germany would have treated her and her child much better than the government here. And that's just sad. I mean, that is sad. Luckily, they, they've lawyered up. Uh, they have a couple lawyers. They're saying that hopefully they will contribute to the uh, bankruptcy of the state. I mean, it is a county matter, but uh, they, they do plan a lawsuit. They've restored most of their rights. They have to follow medical advice, and they are still having a social worker visit their home periodically, which is absurd. They're hoping to close the case by the end of May, but it should be closed now. It should have never been opened. This stuff has to stop. I mean, at some point, we're going to have to wake up and say, this isn't right. I have the right to take my child to any doctor I want. And if the first doctor isn't somebody who I want administering care to my child, I have the right to take my child to a different doctor. And especially after that second doctor said, no, there's no urgent you know, medical emergency. That's the end of it. Because these parents are more than willing to get any medical care that they need for their child. But the state, the county, decided that they could do it better. Remember, head over to NathanNephewShow.com and uh, also tune in to Red State Talk Radio, which I'm sure you are right now. Lots of good shows on there, including At Odds, my my other show with Brian, at oddshow.com. That's all the time I have today, though, so see you next week. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.